Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is At The Helm Sports. I'm your host, Derek Helm. Thank you for joining me for episode 119. Please be sure to follow and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're watching on YouTube, you know, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. But we're diving into the Players' Championship. Going to be a fun one. And full transparency, we actually already recorded a full show. But... We were spitting such hot knowledge that the tech gods didn't want it to be released into the world, so we're back to do it again. And joining me tonight, I have a special guest. We have the Fantasy Golf Writer of the Year, host of the Back Nine Bets podcast, Byron Lindeskew, Model Maniac. How are we doing? You ready to do it again? Hey, I'm a returning guest now. You know, it's not even the first time for me. It's my second time on the show and happy to be back, so... Let's rock and roll. Let's let's spit some fire again and, and have a good time chatting some players championship stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of other people it would fluster and, and really hurt them, but being Jet fans, we're pretty used to disappointment. So Tis but a flesh wound, they say. So yeah, the players. I mean, we we obviously have a, a pretty volatile tournament here, but I, I do think that we've gone through it enough times that we can definitely go through and get some winners here and some good DraftKings plays. But first, you know, we can go over Scotty's week last week. Obviously, he switched putters, gave him a lot of confidence, and he ran laps around the field. And and it's similar to what he did here at the players last year. But what, what are your thoughts on, on Scotty and, and the state of, of his game? I'm trying to remember what I said last, but I'm just going to kind of just go off what I feel right now. And I feel like it's, it's normal. I'm not going to overreact. I think it's all going to be fine. You know, I, we don't know. It's literally two rounds of golf, you know, like he was, he was losing and, and neutral for the first, two rounds right i think he started only gaining over the weekend so are we gonna completely lose our mind over like two rounds of golf i've had two rounds of golf where i thought i could turn pro and then all of a sudden you realize well i gotta put like 20 together at least before you can have those kind of situations so we'll have to wait and see what he gets up to but obviously a scary force if that does continue we shall see in a few days time but um at 12 8 who the hell knows yeah i mean I, I, I definitely think that it gives him confidence, and I, I do think that it could possibly help him out a little bit. But, I mean, said it before, basically, if it starts going the other way again and he starts missing putts and he switched putters, all that confidence goes out the window and he goes, well, it's not the putter, it's me. And then all of a sudden he could turn into a total head case and it could be even worse than it was before. Yes, that is not what you're looking for. And I think we were chatting about where – he it after repetitions of that putter you know you could find yourself just resorting back to the same feeling that you had with a normal putter in your hand after kind of just enjoying the success of a different feel so he may have to just continue to switch putters out like dustin johnson kind of thing maybe maybe that's his jam but we'll have to wait and see it's going to be exciting man yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the API was was great, you know, signature event. And we, we got a bunch of big names up there uh, over the weekend. Obviously, Zalatoris played well. He was unable to really get it done after having the lead on Saturday. Hideki was up there, but he fell back. Justin Thomas was playing well, but then he fell back. Wyndham Clark wasn't able to get it done. So going to be interesting to see how those guys fare this week on on a bit of a different course and a different test but it, it was nice to actually get a tournament where we do have a Sunday at least before Scotty ran away with it that that actually mattered yeah for the sake of golf viewership and things like I don't think golf is going to be a better place with the Scotty Scheffler putting well because he's just he's as good as he is but he's not exciting if that makes any you know like he's He's so good at golf, but he makes golf look so boring. You know, like I would rather watch like say hit the gala win tournaments because you caught, as good as he's hitting the golf ball, you never know where it's going to go. And just Scotty's just too machine like, you know, it's like it's just under too much control. It's not fun. Yeah, at, at least when Rom, you know, even when he was at the top of his game, he would show emotion. There was some sort of personality mm -hmm. there from shot to shot. So I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But diving into this week, obviously, 
it, it's a totally different test. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys tackle it. But first, we can dive into the course. We have the stadium course at TPC Sawgrass. Pete Dye designed 7,200 yard par 72. Now it's listed as Tiff Eagle Bermuda, but it is overseeded with Poa Trivialis. So the Bermuda is dormant at this time of year. So really, I mean, putting splits, I, I wouldn't really worry about the surface. It, it's basically similar to what we see at the Waste Management and TPC Scottsdale. It, it's kind of POA, but kind of not. So it almost plays similar to Bankrass. So I really wouldn't worry too much about the splits there. There are four par threes, four par fives, 10 par fours. Three of the par fives are reachable in two for most of the field, but you have a 600 yard ninth hole that probably only the longer hitters are going to go for that one. And even some of them might, might choose to lay up from time to time, but definitely going to have to take advantage of these par fives. Uh, there's going to be some scoring opportunities here. And, you know, if, if we're seeing scores in, in the mid teens or even close to minus 20, you're going to have to tackle these par fives. Yeah. 16 of them. You got to get to minus eight, at least maybe minus 10, minus 12. And then obviously we have the famous 17th Island green, 137 yards surrounded by water. If the winds pick up, it can absolutely cause chaos to around. So definitely got to keep an eye on that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, a fairly short hole, but it, it's funny the carnage it can cause from tournament to tournament when we see it here. It's a fascinating hole. And if the wind just picks up a touch, right? You saw that graphic where the higher the apex of a shot was into that hole, the worse the outcome would be. Yep. That's like, to me, that's really, really cool. And then, really, around here, I mean, you can have any skill set can play. It's not like you have to focus in on, on a certain golfer with a certain type of skill set. The, the key is mainly stay out of this trouble. Water comes into play on 17 holes. There's 94 bunkers. So there, there's trouble everywhere. Trouble everywhere, man. And it's, it's going to, like you said, like that's the thing about the players is it opens up so many, so many avenues for all these different golfers, right? Because anyone can do it off the tee. Anyone can do it on approach. We can, it's not like Bay Hill where only a specific set of people can win. Yeah, absolutely. Now with all the trouble, I mean, obviously accuracy over distance is probably the optimal strategy. The rough is penal, but it's slightly less than when it was played in May because there is less of that Bermuda grass. So they might grow out the rough a bit. That That's one of the things with this course too, is, is they can make it play however they want it. It's actually, yeah it's very interesting in, in that way. Cause we don't see that from a lot of courses. It's basically, you know, how much rain did they get? How much wind is there? Mm -hmm. And, but they, they can change it from day to day, even at this course. Yeah. So it's, it's generally a less than driver course with the amount of trouble and, and just a lot of dog legs here. So definitely want to keep that in mind. We, we discussed it before with these Pete Dye designs, you know, has a lot of mounds on the right, basically. So if you miss right, you could be a completely uneven lie, ball below your feet, ball above your feet. Just It could be very awkward, similar to, to Hideki when he shot out of the water last week. So yeah. may, maybe he'll be fine, but the rest of the field probably doesn't want to go there. And then a lot of times if you miss left, you're, you're going in the water. So it it's going to be an interesting week. Very interesting, dude. And I, I'm kind of... Um... I'm looking forward to the carnage, man. You know, uh, I want to see some really good golfers in the water. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure there will be plenty. I mean, that's the interesting part, too, is, you know, it's not just trouble off of the tee, but it's also trouble on approach. I mean, you, you could just slightly miss the green, yeah. and you could be in a deep bunker. You could be in the water. So we're going to see plenty of shots from different locations, 22% from over 200 yards, 20% from 150 to 175, 20% from 125 to 150. So golfers are going to be using basically every club in their bag, and, and it's really going to test their entire game. Now, the big thing you want to keep an eye on is the weather, because obviously it, it can cause complete carnage like we saw in 2022. Now, as far as weather splits go, really – got to keep an eye on, on on when the wind is going to kick in if there's any rain but 
it's Florida, so at any chance it can change. As we saw in 2022, everybody thought that they had it perfect, and then there was a very long delay, so it just flips it on its head. So it might actually make a little bit of sense if, if you are building enough lineups to to build a certain stack the way you think it might go and then go the complete opposite way as well. Yeah, I'm pulling it up now. We can take a look as we go, but I'm looking forward to stacking. I think I think the common theme is to stack AM, PM, and they, they might be wind looking like it's going to be showing up here on, on Friday afternoon, which could make some interesting PM, AM stacks rather enticing. Yeah, and, and and that's the narrative right now is, is you know, yeah. what I think it was, what, two two winners, basically, that have gone off at, on PM in, in Thursday. So yeah. a lot of people are targeting that AM, PM, and it could be the complete opposite. And you know what's something I want to chat about as well is, do you think that's because it's AM, PM that has done so well because they want the best golfers playing in the afternoon on a Friday? Yeah, I, I mean, that that definitely makes sense. I mean, you probably have some of the better golfers going off on that Friday. And even if there is a little bit of weather concern, it, it's it's probably hurting the weaker golfers more than it is the better golfers, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens, man. But those kind of trends are, are interesting. I think, I think there's golfers that doesn't make sense. I don't understand why it would be that way, you know, outside of them just stacking the field to to kind of satisfy viewership. But yeah, we'll yeah, that, that's the only thing that makes sense. And yeah. let's be serious. If there's any course that can buck the trends, I mean, year in, year yes. out, th this would be the course, I would say. Let's go. So if we dive into the field, obviously we have reigning champ, 12,800 Scotty Scheffler. And I'm kind of coming into what I want to do with him. It, it looks like right now he's only showing about 30%, but I could see it being closer to 40% ownership. So I think I'm probably going to fall just right somewhere in there, 30 to 40%, you know, and because I, I started building some lineups and I, I will say that building a little bit more balanced feels way better. Now, obviously you do want Scotty in your lineup, but you kind of got to get a little bit weird and, and dip down into this 5K range. We can get there. There are some plays there, but you got to get them right. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if Scotty wins. Correct. And that's the beauty of DFS is they've priced him ac accordingly for the first time in a while. It took, it took him winning for them to really ramp up his price tag to where it should have inevitably always been. But it's golf, yep. man. And 30% is... A lot for a golfer, right? At, around this kind of venue at that kind of price tag, it's going to be very difficult for those 30% of people to kind of figure out exactly who the other five need to be because you're going to not have a lot of money to spend on that. So I'm thinking I'm going to kind of take my chances, dude. If he's going to be pushing 30, 35, 40 right after a win, yeah, I bet the guy top 10 already now, it's going to be what it is. And then we'll see what happens in the DFS world. We'll let We'll stack a few 9K guys together and really try to get aggressive that way. Yeah, and and the other thing is too. I mean, as the defending champ, we you know, defending champs haven't really fared well here. But part of it could be think about the media obligations he had after the win last week, and then now he's got media obligations as the defending champion all this week. So yeah. maybe maybe that does affect him a little bit. He's a very under the radar guy. You know, Scotty's very um, humble individual he doesn't like the spotlight when he wins he's in the spotlight right he's got to throw on a cardigan and hoist a trophy in the air and i think maybe that's that kind of messes with his mojo he gets out of his routine he's got to be you know doing all the media stuff so who the heck knows but he's so good he he knows his golf course backwards so i'm yeah. i'm assuming he'll be playing well for at least if he finishes 10th that would be ideal for me yeah, there you go. You, you hit your top. You hit your top ten, but it doesn't hurt you in the in the DFS. So yeah, that that would make sense. Now he's he's twelve hundred dollars more than Rory, and Rory is is not going to get ownership this week. You know, hasn't really been playing terrible. It's kind of just some blow up holes here and there, and and really a bunch of missed putts the previous week. So I don't know if I can get there on Rory, but from a game theory standpoint, he he's going to be 
much lower owned than, than Scotty is. He is. And, you know, this is the thing about DFS is, is it, are we going in the right direction when we're going away from ownership, especially at the top of the board? Usually the top guys are owned the way they are because the, the, the arrows are all pointing in the direction that they should or shouldn't. And Rory's arrows are currently pointing away from top 20s. He hasn't had one in 2024 yet. Didn't play in Hawaii, obviously. And outside of his win in the last five years, he's played just three missed cuts and a 33rd. You know, like, is that... And, of course, history is not, like, predictive as much as it should be at most golf courses. But still, you know, there's there's not a lot going for him. I think, you know, maybe maybe Xander... I, I don't know. I, I know you're a fan of a few other guys down the board here from just a gut feel. Um, no, no prior knowledge in my database here, but um, I'm curious as to what you have to say about the rest of the 10 Ks. Yeah. Yeah. Xander, I mean, is probably the safest guy up here, but just, I, I really like going down to, to Thomas and, and even a little bit below there. I, I I've made an outright on Justin Thomas, 25 to one. I just, I love where his game is at. One little hiccup at the Genesis, but otherwise has been playing very well. Has obviously won this tournament before. So I, I I like him. I do think he will be popular, though. Probably the most popular up here. I, I think if people don't start with Scotty, a lot of lineups actually will start with Thomas. But I'm fine eating the chalk. I probably won't play him in my 20 max, but more so three entry, single entry stuff. But okay. I, I, I'm fine eating the chalk on Thomas. Yeah, you know, you got to pick your battles. You can't, you know, avoid all the chalk. Otherwise, you're most likely going to you're going to require to go run perfectly hot for one week if you're kind of dodging everything. JT, what we said earlier, eight consecutive made cuts at this players now. So that's going to drive a lot of ownership that direction. He's been playing good golf this year outside of the Genesis, which was kind of a, just a random blimp. I mean, he's just finished inside the top 12 every time he's teed it up. So a lot to like about that. It's ownership dependent. And I think if you do it, you got to kind of figure your stuff out elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, great momentum coming in. Great, great year so far. You just said it. I mean, all eight appearances, he's he's made the cut here, which it's very hard to find anybody, even with three or four appearances that has made the cut that many times here. So Definitely playing well. I think he's only lost strokes tee to green once here. So a lot of things point towards Justin Thomas, but you can make a case for for some of the guys below him. Cantlay is probably going to go completely unowned, and I'm fine skipping over him if, if he hurts me. Hasn't really played great here, but I'd probably be more interested in Hovland. You know, the short game's been, been an issue you know, he he seemed to fix it last year. Came o- came away with with some nice tournaments and and some nice around the green performances. But it seems to be an issue again. But if you're hitting greens, then you don't have to worry about the around the green game. And I mean, he's one of the best ball strikers in the world, so it's definitely in the realm of possibilities. Yeah, if he runs hot, and that's his strength, right? Just kind of making sure he avoids those chips. And even when he does have to chip, or Mr. Green, he might not even have to chip because of these runoff areas. He can really just putt from where he needs to putt, um, avoiding those catastrophic chips that we've seen. We saw that bunker shot in Hawaii that we thought was might have just been a random situation, but man, it's been atrocious around the greens for Victor since he's got rid of his coach, just because he wants to ask a few extra questions, apparently, according to him. So tough scenes there for old Vic. Really hasn't shown us much this year. I'm looking forward to him bounce back. He is one of my favorites to watch play good golf too, you know, so we'll have to. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. If we move a little bit further down now, Zalatoris and Hideki, I do like, I've actually made wagers on them. I, I have Zalatoris at 30 to one and I have Hideki at 41 to one with uh, top seven each way. I do like the form that both of them are in Zalatoris. I, I do love where his irons are. And I, I do think that, that could actually carry him here, but you know, I don't know. What what are, what are your thoughts on Zalatoris? So when you mentioned Justin Thomas not having anyone else has had at least like three made cuts in succession or their entire career, all Zalatoris has made the cut at the players all three years, twenty first, twenty sixth, seventy third. 
didn't play so hard last time, but he must have been injured or so. It's interesting, yeah. right? Because to me, he seems like a guy that's set up for these big venues, and that to me just has me turned off of him. Especially, I think he's gonna ninety nine hundred dollars. That's gonna be cheaper than ten. You know, that's what they price stuff in the supermarkets and the and the stores for, because yeah. it just doesn't seem the same. I think they're going to be willing to go down there, especially after seeing how he's played the last little while. But those courses are different. You know, they're going to they're going to suit a totally different skill set. This venue, you know, we haven't seen a top 20 from him yet. Granted, he's probably playing some of the best golf of his life right now. Now that he's on the broomstick, um, looking forward to seeing what he can get up to there with a 49-1 major at the Masters future there for me. But... I don't know. I might just leave him alone this week and kind of go to two other guys down at the bottom that I've bet outright by the name of Wyndham Clark and Max Homer. So once you uh, give me your spiel about Hideki Matsuyama and his numb legs, we can we can chat about my two guys. <laughs> yeah, so Ma- Matsuyama, I, I do like the outright on him. I, I just It's a place where he's played well before. Obviously, he was the first round leader in 2020 before they suspended play. So he likes this place. He's in incredible form, you know, one couple weeks ago. The back, though, is definitely a concern. He, he's been playing a lot of golf and, you know, it's it remains to be seen whether him falling back on Sunday is because of that injury or if it's just him having a bad Sunday. But because of that, I'm fine riding with the outright. And I, I do think that at an elevated price, his ownership gets up there as well. So I, I'm going to fade him there, but I I just, I do like the outright. I, I like the upside, especially with the each way. I, I definitely think that he could possibly pay that off, but I think the risk is a little too much with the ownership he's going to carry in DFS. You said each way seven places? Yes. Yeah. So I'm checking in now because heading into the Genesis, his only top 10 had been the players over the last 12 months heading into the Genesis. So obviously he goes, his next top 10 is a win. And now we're playing at the players. So he's had two top 10s entering this week. And the last time, the second one was a year ago. Yeah, not great. You know, like the the upside, a lot of people say that, you know, like I don't mean to like push against you or anything, but no, no, just, absolutely. It's like this asphyxiation with Hideki. It's interesting to me because he gets all this hype. I don't understand why, because we've only had the win and the one top 10. And I think there's just this allure of the green jacket that kind of hangs over people's heads and stuff. And, you know, us Jets fans, we love love a good green jacket. But to me, Adeki is just, he's not a jet jet, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's kind of just a fake jet. So I don't know what I'm going on about there, but just two top 10s is, is not going to do it for me. Yeah, no, it, it's it definitely has has not been a great year, but the the start of 2024 definitely looks more promising. Mm-hmm. And I, I think part of what the luster is is, you know, th- their games aren't similar at all. But I'll, I'll compare them kind of to Siwoo. It's just you know when 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 he's hitting, he's hitting. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's 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 boomer bust, but a little bit less of the bust that Siwoo has. So I, I think that's kind of where the excitement comes. Is, is you know. We've seen it too, where with no form, where he just comes out of nowhere and and he can yeah. contend. But yeah. I, I think that might be part of what it is. Is it's not consistent, but he does have ceilings. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So why don't why don't you tell me uh, about the next two guys, Wyndham and Homer? All right. So Max Homer, like Robert Sala says. The Jets go as the defensive line goes and the defense goes because that's the backbone of the team. Max Homer's putter is the backbone of his game, in my opinion. When his putter is firing, the rest of his game starts to drip some confidence. He starts to play some better golf, starts to hit the ball well. Just knowing that you can get up and down from a, from a bad lie, making a 10-footer repeatedly, gives you a bit more freedom to hit your approach shots into the greens, especially these kind of ones that have these different tiers and and really tight pin locations next to water. So you're not obviously not going to get up and down from 10 feet if you're in the water, but you understand what I'm getting at there. So I think with Max finishing sixth last week, gaining the third most strokes putting, I'm looking to get ahead of him. And I don't – what are you seeing his ownership at right now? I haven't done any ownership stuff. Yeah, uh, honestly, it's it's only showing ten percent right now. Yeah, 
if that's the case, I will be going heavy. I mean, regardless, I think I'm going to be going heavy on Max. A 13th and a 6th year, he's, his floor is pretty darn good for a golfer that hasn't really had his A game. We know what Max can do when he plays on the West Coast, and we even saw him struggling around there. Couldn't quite get it together for us at the Farmers. Even finishing 13th, you know, was literally his C game. So I think going into a golf course that he's played well at with the putter now potentially heating up, give me that. And then Wyndham Clark, he seems like he doesn't quite get it together off the tee accuracy-wise, but you don't want to penalize guys that have bad accuracy at this golf course, but you do want to kind of lean into guys that have good accuracy. The reason I say that is because the guys with the bad accuracy, for instance, like Benny Ahn or Cam Davis, you know, the accuracy with the driver isn't quite what you'd like, but they can really drill those fairways with long irons and, and the likes, you know, like even a dick on courses shorter than 7,200 yards, he's 15th in the field, but his accuracy is only 62nd, right? So like he, he sees a big improvement in that range. Similar situation goes for Wyndham Clark, but it's not really reflected in the 7,200 yard range, but I know he gained four and a half strokes off the tee year in last year's players. That makes a lot of sense. He's powerful, right? Three irons off the tee all day. He's a very good long iron player. And the putter can get absolutely dialed. He's a very, very good long and mid-iron player too. He hits a lot of good shots in that range. His good shot percentage for weighted shots in this field is third. So he's going to be gaining over half a stroke, more than 154 other people, 153 other people in the field. However many, what, 156? So he's likely going to be hitting it stiff. And that's good to know because the scores are going to be getting low. We saw what he could get up to at Pebble, and I feel like that's kind of a similar situation again. Let's do Wyndham Clark, 35-1, to 1, um, and Max Homer, 33-1 to 1 there. Love both those bets. We'll be, we'll be playing them a lot together. I might start a lot of my lineups off with both those guys. Yeah, and and, and that's what I was saying about Scotty lineups, is is I made some Wyndham Clark, Max Homa, and I, I like those lineups a lot better than, than the Scotty lineups. It's just one less jabroni that you have to slide in there, yeah. you know, or two yep. even, you know, 12, 12 eight is insane. I mean, that's $2,200 more than Max Homer. Now, I know, yep. you know, like, oof. Yeah, and I, I'm right there with you. I, I made an outright on Homa. I have him at 25 to one, basically when FanDuel opened it up. I, I was worried that... He might have a good Sunday, so maybe that number yeah. would slip. So I took the 25, could have waited, you know, and got a little bit better number, but I'm, I'm fine with the 25. I, I love everything that you said, you know, the, mm. the putter. I think I've been on four of his six wins with outrights, so maybe we get another one here. Dude, And then I need that juju. Sorry, I need that juju bad because I've had Keegan Bradley lose to Max Homer twice <laughs> when I was on Keegan, and every time I've been on Keegan, Max, he's finished second. Like he finished second to Rom. Like I just can't get him right. So like, I right, feel so like this is, is this is the week. I, this I, is it, dude. and it it was it, it was yeah. it was the first bet I made. You know, when when Fanduel released those odds, it it was that right away. Let's go. I love that. And then also, I'm I'm with you on Wyndham Clark as well. I didn't bet the outright, but I did take him at a uh, top twenty at two to one. So uh, I think he can definitely play well here. I think so too. Going to be skipping over Spieth. Definitely not going to be the only one. I, I do think he could potentially play well here, but hasn't in the past. And just there's a couple too many hiccups in his game recently. So I'm, I'm fine not going there. Morikawa hasn't looked good at all, but I do think that this is a course that could, could fit him pretty well. You know, played pretty well here last year. So... I'm still up in the air on him. Still up in the air on a lot of these guys, but what are you thinking in this range? Kevin Van Valkenburg from the No Laying Up guys there mentioned that Augusta is like the only place that can make Jordan Spieth's brain light up. It, you know, like Spieth is a special kind of golfer, right? Like there's no one like him. He's entertainment factor 101, and it's it's so fun to watch him golf. But I think he just checks out you know he's new new dad his second kid now can't string four rounds of golf together and around this yeah. golf course you cannot have a single lapse of concentration there's going to be 
unless unless this stimulates him, it's going to spell disaster, in my opinion, just based off what he's been up to the last little while. He just hasn't strung them together. Unless the first two rounds are the ones he does well, then the weekend could end up being fun. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd agree, especially if he's popular out. Colin Morikawa, I noticed something very interesting about him. He used to be his two-year baseline on Dota Golf for strokes gain from 200 and out has always been in like the 99th percentile. If I'm looking now for the last 12 months, he's 36th in this field in strokes gained from 200 yards. This is Colin Marikawa. At one point in the in time, he he was the best iron player in the world. Incredible from 200 yards. Like 99th percentile is, you know, top five, top 10 in the world. Easy. Yep. Now he's sitting here 36th, you know, in strokes gained in this field. You know, like we're not even including John Rahm and Joachim and them. So... We need to figure out what's going on with Colin Morikawa's long irons because he's lost the plot, you know. And to me, that was an essential part of his game because he doesn't quite have the length of the tee. So I'm kind of out on him this week for that reason. And just because yeah. he can't play good golf when he needs to. Yeah, I, I think maybe maybe a first round leader, bet because he has, you know, a yes. couple times this year. He's he's been playing incredibly well in the first round and then just complete opposite. <laughs> the rest so yeah eighth best strokes gained in round one 49th in round two 27th in round three and then second in round four <laughs> so just when it doesn't matter he's got it yeah pretty much now oberg kind of don't know what to do with him either obviously he should have some help with his caddy who who was ricky's caddy when he won here but I don't know. Well, what are you thinking with Oberg? I am going to. What is before I answer that question? What's his ownership right now that you're seeing over there? Right now, it is. It's pretty low. Where... So if it's low, I'm in the mood for Ludwig because I don't like him when he's high owned. I don't like him. I don't think he suits these long bomber narrative courses that people are trying to make him fit into right we've seen him succeed at pebble we've seen him succeed at the rsm those are all kind of venues that require clubbing down that require a bit of you know short wedgy flicky approach shots and kind of strategy off the tee he hasn't thrived in these big boy events i mean last week at the api he finished 25th like that golf course is if if you made a factory of golf courses that's like top five golf course for him you know, thick rough that you got to hit a lot of fairways. Hasn't been doing it at this venue though. I'm in. I think I think his game changes around quite nicely here. And if he's going to be ninety three hundred dollars, I'm I'm cool with him being sub ten percent ownership likely. Yeah, yeah. He's coming in right now. Him and Morikawa are looking somewhere around like eight or nine percent. Yeah, yeah. I'll play some Ludwig. Not a lot. You know, probably just double the field. Probably fifteen twenty percent. But that's about it there. Yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. And and you said it, you know, pe- people expect him, you know, look at him as a bomber and, and playing better on, on the longer bomber courses. I, I I was right there with the API last week. I had an outright on him. I thought he would fare well there, but obviously didn't. But definitely make a case for him. If he's going to be that low, low owned, it, it it's definitely worth a look. Yeah. Now we have two golfers right below them that, that, have been in very good form in Sam Burns and Shane Lowry Burns relies a little bit too much on the putter. So I I don't know how he's going to fare here, but I I think he could play well. And Shane Lowry has just been on absolute fire. I think, I think it's kind of hard to ignore. He's going to be incredibly high owned, but that might be another guy that, that just I'm willing to eat the chalk on there with Lowry. $9,100 Derek Shane Lowry, what two top fives to finish the last two starts i think he's typically played well yeah in the past we got an eighth a 13th and a 35th made four out of his last five cuts at the players in good form arguably a guy that could easily like we said on the previous show he's going to finish second you know like at a 9100 dollar clip we can find the other other five guys are going to be the ones that win shane at 9100 dollars is a vital part to that kind of buffering of he's he seems relatively safe entering this course. You know, he seems comfortable on this golf course. He's hitting his irons so well. And that's the biggest thing is guys hitting the irons. 
that are in control of their shot shapes and control of, in control of their ball flights, they're going to be navigating those watery hazards much better than guys that are coming in that don't know where the ball's going. And Shane, to me, is one of the safer options at a very discounted price to $9,100. Give it to me, baby. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's been on fire with the iron. So yeah. I, I, I definitely, and I mean, really, you could probably make it work. You could even go Homa, Clark, and fit Shane in there. And, and you, got, you got a pretty fancy start there. Okay, Derek. Okay, Derek. I, I like where we're going here. I'm actually going to throw that in right now, and I'll get back to you on, on what the, the remaining salary is. But that seems really appealing to me. Yeah, definitely. Cam Young is just a guy that I just I don't really play. Played him last week, and obviously that did not work out well at all. But Jason Day is a guy that I'm willing to play. Nobody's going to play him, and oddly enough, I've made an outright on him at fifty to one with top seven each way. I have no rhyme or reason other than it's a gut feel, and a lot of times. I've actually won outrights with just no statistical backing to it and just had a feeling. And for some reason, I'm feeling Jason Day here this week. He's obviously won here before. He's played well. So I'm back in Jason Day at, at the players. Hey, I'll I'll be the model maniac to your Batmania and say a fifth, an eighth, a 19th, and four made cuts in his last five players' appearances. That vouches pretty well from him from a statistical history there. And then a sixth and a ninth at the Genesis and Pebble Beach are two beautiful top 10 finishes. What did you get Jay Day at for now, Dry? 40? Uh, 50. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a past, you know, made uh, players champ. Guys can can get hot. His short game is one of he's one of the better scramblers on tour when he's in the Jay Day zone. And seems like every now and then he, he gets in there. And I think this course lights parts of his brain up, which is not nearly as um electrically depravating like speeds whatever those two well words done. together are but i didn't even know where i was going with that sentence until i got to the end of it but jason day is a little bit more easy to kind of you know trust around a golf course like this and i don't mind that bit at all dude yeah i i just you know when he's not going to pop in in a model or anything but he's just he's been playing pretty good golf recently and played well at the players so I, i'm i'm willing to go there and he's probably going to be like 5% owned so i'll join you, you can sprinkle in i'll join you on the day the j day dfs side for sure i love that and um scotty if you put scotty in your lineup you got $7440 left for your next 5 so 7 call it 74 if you go with Max Homer, Wyndham Clark, and Shane Lowry, you've got seven two for your next three. There you, you know, go. like to me, that's and you know, where are you gonna find two additional guys like Wyndham Clark and Shane Lowry in that Scotty Scheffler lineup for two hundred dollars extra? You know, like that's what's so hard about the Scotty lineups. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you you only need three guys around that price tag. And, and you have three incredible golfers. Whereas with Scotty, you, you have several scrubs and yeah, you have Scotty, but yeah. you, you got to hope and pray that those guys actually play well here. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, that's the thing. So who the hell knows, man, I'm still trying to make up my mind on what I want to do there. Now, if we keep going down here, I mean, and anyone that, that in the upper eights that catches your eye, really? Yeah. Um, Sahith. Thigala is going to be interesting. I should have had some ownership pulled up here because that's a very important situation. But I think what Sahith's looking like, he's going to be roughly 8% owned, which is fine. I'll take that if he's 10%. I know the course history is not the greatest. People have the stigma about him being a really bad driver of the golf ball. I have a 55 to 1 outright on the guy, and I have a 55 to 1 outright on the 14th best driver of the golf ball in 2024 in this field. That's Sahith the gala, right? Like that doesn't sound right. If I told you that at the beginning of oh, the year, yeah. it wouldn't make sense, but it is. And he finished incredibly well at the API, which is a very driver intensive golf course. I think if you take driver out of his hands, it's almost like disadvantaging now, but I think he's actually going to play better because he can hit that two iron or that hybrid of his 
you know, really, really well. Like if you think back to the waste management Phoenix Open, where he kind of hit that and had a really bad bounce into the water, I think Sahith can do it. And we've seen guys scramble their face off. Uh, on my show just a little bit ago, I compared Sahith of past, so 2023 Sahith, to Cam Smith because the driver was all over the place, the irons yep. could get very hot, and the short game electric. You know, not electrically deprivating like Jordan Spieth's brain, but very stimulating, you know. Now we've got Sahith, who's 14th in the field in strokes gained off the tee. That's, I don't even know who to compare him to now because that's a very well-rounded profile of a golfer. So give me that. If he's going to be sub 10%, I'll load him up in my lineups. I'm assuming Scotty, uh, Tommy Fleetwood is going to be very low owned. I'll take a gamble on him. He likes this golf course a lot. Had one really bad hole last week that I think a lot of people are going to be turned off by. Florida golf, folks. If you are looking at DFS in particular and betting, but more so like just the DFS because people are scared of strokes gained numbers. One hole was Scott, uh, Tommy Fleetwood just went made a 10 or a 12 on that par five, right? So that can completely skew all of his strokes gained, especially if the last 24 rounds are rather limited. And he plays well at these kind of golf courses. So I'll take him. He's got top five potential too. Put him in a Shane Lowry lineup and you've got a second and a third place guaranteed. Find your fourth guy your four other guys to win the tournament for you. So we'll see what can cook there. And then finally, my little secret agent over here is potentially going to be Sung J M, who's $8,400. And if you take a look at his projected ownership, it's actually kind of high at 7-ish percent. You know, considering he's entering the week, not necessarily playing the best golf ever, but he did play quite nicely at the API. So maybe people are kind of getting ahead of the steam there as well. But he's 65th in strokes gain total for 2024 and he's getting seven you know seven percent love i think it's got a lot to do with the fact that he's played well yeah as well i think you know we've got a sixth and a 17th so a lot to like from sung jay but maybe if he's going to catch a lot of heat i might get off of him because he's more of a sneaky play because i don't really trust that the form coming in outside of four rounds of golf at a golf course he's played well at yeah that makes sense i i mean seven's Seven's fine. I think if he fine. pushes a little bit more mm -hmm. than that, I'd, I'd probably get a little worried. I, d I do think that Connors comes in by far the highest owned in, in, in this area. So probably keep Sungjae down a hair. Henley could get a little bit popular too. So I, I don't see him pushing more than seven, eight percent. But I, yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm playing Sungjae. I, I saw yeah. enough last week that. I'm willing to just completely block out the rest of 2024 from my mind at 8,400. I, I I think it's a good price for him. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who, who literally broke the PGA Tour birdie record this year. And then after that was broken himself, you know, like talk about just breaking everything in, in sight. So yeah. Um, and Russell Henley, I'm just going to bet him top 20 plus 170. Call it a day. I think I'm not dealing with a 20% owned Russell Henley. If, if he catches a bit more steam in during the week, um, the the irons they've they've completely disappeared and he's replaced that with short game which to me is not what i'm comfortable betting russell henley you know like uh, if he's if his approach plays kind of subsided i i don't know what's going on so we'll have to wait and see there but i'll bet the top 20 and quarter today yeah a hundred and third in strokes gained approach over the last 24 rounds is is not what you would think russell henley would be it, it's now granted he's such a good ball striker and so good with the irons maybe he can just turn it on and if he can keep that short game going then fine but i'm with you at, at this ownership i am absolutely fine just looking right over him yeah. and i wasn't really too excited about tony fee now but at 8500 the, the more i look into it just hasn't had incredible finishes this year but he's striking the ball so well he's he's actually playing well and he, he hasn't been great at the players, but 19th last year. And I mean, you, you look at a lot of guys history here and they weren't good. They weren't good. And then all of a sudden they were. So course history isn't crazy important here. And I, I think that's part of what's going to keep his ownership down. But over the last 24 rounds, third in strokes gained approach, second in opportunities gained, fifth in par five scoring, third from 200 yards fourth tee to green. I mean, he's playing really good golf and at only 8,500, if 
a lot of people aren't going to go there. You know, if he's sitting somewhere around 10, 12%, I, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. You know, the thing is, depending what contest you get into, just getting six guys through at the players is a massive up oh, yeah. on the rest of the field, right? And at $8,500, Tony's likely going to do that for you. He's The ball striking is consistent enough. It's just the, the lack of upside with the putter just holding him back. So, amen. Let's go. Now, I brought up Corey Connors. I, I, I think he's in a good space. I, I do like where his game is at, and I think he could definitely play well here. So I'll, I'll that's another guy I'm willing to eat the chalk on. I don't think he gets crazy out of control, but he's definitely going to be popular. Yeah, but I don't think too crazy. You know, he's sitting around that Siwoo Kim Russell Henley. He'll, he'll be less than both of them, likely. So I think that's, by definition, a, a, a reasonable pivot despite being a little popular still. Um, you're going to have two very volatile individuals either side of him more owned. So I don't mind Corey, especially the way he's been playing and course history, like you mentioned. And then as we get down here a little bit further, th this is where, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and fit more guys at the top and just be a little more selective as we get down here. But a couple guys in this area that I like, I, I like Benny on. I just like where his game's at. He's been playing very, very good golf. And I've made a top 30 bet on him at plus 150. So uh, I'm I'm cool with Benny on. I, honestly, I, I didn't even realize that he finished that well last week. Um, I did because I had a top 10 on him and it wasn't anywhere near cashing until Sunday. There I had go. the fourth or fifth best round of the day. And that's the thing with this dude is he can make birdies in bunches no matter where he plays. I think Bay Hill, I think, you know, the Century, you think the Sony, you think just it's those are like varying golf courses. And he can just his games traveling since he's got on the broomstick. We the year is 2033, Derek. And we've got why is this person putting with a normal putter situations going on? You know, like I can see the tour just being broomstick city you know like it's just gonna be it's gonna be like a harry potter hogwarts scene there guys just <laughs> jumping off their broomstick every every green because especially for the bad putters it seems to have really nullified their issues and benny on actually has putted well yeah in the past without the broomstick what's yeah. he gonna do with the broomstick yeah you know he's obviously comfortable on these greens so let's go yeah An another guy i'm willing to go to is, is siwoo kim now, he's actually been playing pretty good golf. It's just the putter has been letting him down. But mm. the rest of his game has has been very strong. So, Siwoo, we, you know, we talked about it before. He, he's very boom bust. But, you know, he, he's either going to be eight over and miss the cut here or be possibly contending, maybe top 10. So, I, I'm fine taking a chance on Siwoo and, and hoping he can fix the putting woes. I don't mind it. I don't think I'm going to be in with you, though. I just I think he's going to be too popular. And with 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 so much unknown, you know, Derek, I think at 15, 15 percent projected right now for a guy mm. that, you know, that really, if you take a look at what he's been up to, 24 starts on the tour in the last 12 months, 8 percent of them have only been a top 10, you know, like. At that kind of ownership, I'm kind of looking for guys that have got more than that. You know, like Min, Min Woo, Benny Ahn, those guys have got double the amount of top fives than what, you know, Siwoo has top 10. So it's it's an interesting dilemma. And I think in my, in my week, I'm going to leave him alone um, and kind of go elsewhere there. That's fair. I just, Pete Dye specialist. He, yeah. I'm I'm fine going to it. I I didn't realize it was 15. percent I think when I saw it before, it was like 10 10 or 12, but that was that was way earlier today. So obviously yeah. things are rounded more into form today. But I'll have to make a decision if he gets a little bit higher, especially if he's pushing up over 15. But as of right now, I see Wu still in the in the player pool. Sure. But what else you like in here? I have a Minwoo Lee outright that I failed to even bring up on my own show a little bit ago, if that tells you how my day is going. Um, had 10 outrights, spoke about nine of them. I guess that's a solid hit rate. I'll take that at a bar any day when I was back in college. So Minwoo is one of these guys. He's the opposite of Russell Henley. 
So, you know, we mentioned Russell Henley's strokes gained approach being so poor lately. His poor yeah. shot avoidance is second in this field, but 99th in good shot rate. So he like refuses to hit it close, but also like just refuses to miss, miss bad shots, you know? So that's very crazy to see. Min Wu, looking at his stuff, if you take a peek at Data Golf, he's like a top end good shot rate guy with the wedge in his hand, third in the field from 100 to 150 but his strokes gained is 116th. So he's just literally the definition of boom or bust. And to me, you know, whatever. I'll take it at a course he's comfortable at. He played nicely. I'm kind of taking, there's multiple guys that have played well at the players and at the Cognizant this year. If you've done that twice for me, I'll like let those boxes check each other and make like a third imaginary box because it's recent form on a similar golf course that I'm kind of in the mood for. So Minwoo, you know, I faded him last week when he was 35% at $6,600. And I think this is the week to kind of go back to him when everyone's, he's at what, a fifth of the ownership. So I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, Brian Harmon, I got an outright on him at 75 to one. He's gained strokes off the tee at this golf course in 19 of his 23 rounds and when he's lost it hasn't been more than half a stroke so it's just this epitome of consistency at a golf course like this and at $7,900 you're not going to find a driving profile like that and you're also not going to find a, a guy that that's not named Tom Hoagie that gained an insane amount of strokes at the API on approach so if that overlaps and kind of goes into this week he's going to be hitting irons from the fairway on repeat, you know, like, and if he's hitting his irons as well as he was last week, we're in trouble because he can putt lights out. This is the champion golfer of the year we're talking about at $7,900, you know. So I'll take him, especially as a pivot off of Siwoo. I think, what, we're probably going to get Harmon, not half the ownership, but significantly less, in my opinion, than Russell Henley and, and Siwoo. Yeah, I'm seeing somewhere around 10% right now, yeah. which I, that's way too low because I, I completely agree with you. I mean, yeah. to be that consistent at a course like this is it's very impressive. Yeah, it's, and that's the most reliable stat there is, right, is driving because you're on a tee every single time. You can repeat it the most. And Yep. Yeah. If we go down a little bit more, Tom Hoagie is probably going to be – one of the chalkiest guys down here, but just with how well he's been striking the ball, it's it's kind of hard to get away from him. So yeah. de definitely got to play mm -hmm. him. And then I've also made a top 20 on him at plus 275. I, I absolutely love that number. So let's go, Hoagie. Let's go, Hoagie. I'm going to just let you do him in DFS, but I'm going to ride you. I'm going to ride with you on the top 20 there for him because it's been amazing. You know, that's the only market he's actually returned dollars on in the last 12 months. Every top 10, top five win, you've, you've lost money betting him every time he's played. But top 20s, I think five of his last seven starts have been a top 20, you know. And at this golf course, he's had immense success. So love that top 20 bet. Hopefully he finishes, in my opinion, a little T19 there and uh, call it a day. There you go. Uh, I'll take it. Now, also, I, I like Eric Cole. I, I just, I think this is a guy that, you know, people saw him have a yeah. not even a terrible tournament, just maybe a terrible round. And now all of a sudden he was one of the most consistent, popular golfers and and nobody wants any part of him so at 7700 i think it's a great price for him i've made a top 30 bet on him at, at two to one so i i like eric cole quite a bit here yeah i love him from a dfs perspective he can make birdies in absolute bunches and i also just realized that i made a note in my research show to bet eric cole at plus money for a top 40 he's done it 75 percent of his starts <laughs> that's crazy that's insane like if yeah. you felt if you like check that out, that's like just an incredible amount of of performance there. There's only the likes of Sam Burns, Tommy Fleetwood, Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland, Cantley, Shafley, and Scotty Scheffler, who have more top forties than Eric Cole. You know, like 
so consistent. And he's it's not like he's done that picking and choosing his tournaments. That's in 32 rounds of 32 yeah. tournaments in the last 12 months. That's more than most people in this field by a long margin. So let's go, man. I'm I'm all about that, Eric. That Derek, sorry. Yeah, no, Eric, I, I, Eric I, I Eric. saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw him at, at two to one for a top 30, and that just, it didn't seem right. So I, I was happy to take that. Boom. I love that. What else are you liking in this range? I've filtered out of this range. So let me filter back in Rio real quick and get back to you on Keegan Bradley's interesting. You know, he's got some great course history, a big feather in his, not a feather in his cap, a chip on his shoulder, so to speak, as well. I kind of be jumping back to the top here. I just wanted to mention him. Jake Knapp is also another guy that I, I think people are trying to put him into that same Ludwig situation. With these guys with immense distance off the tee, they keep trying to make it happen, you know, on these long courses. They should find success. He did find success at the Farmers and at Mexico. But he also played really well at the Cognizant. And it's because he can hit – he's he's a – I'm going to use this word and say he's an elite iron player. We've seen very minimal sample size from him. But when he has been on, I mean, those weekend rounds, I think, what, the Saturday round at Mexico, it was – it was a show, man. Like he was, yeah. oh, yeah. you know, so, and it's been on repeat. He he did that at the Cognizant on Sunday, kind of charging up the board, missed multiple short putts there to kind of really get him in the mix. So I don't mind Jake Knapp, Cam Davis as well. He's been making cuts like crazy, plays well at this golf course. He's $7,000 flat. And then I'll also mention Steven Yeager. I'll go to Steven Yeager here. He's, his safety is just incredible. It makes, makes cuts at a 92% clip for a $7,200 golfer. Drives the ball immensely well. And that's, to me, like number one stuff for safety this week is making sure you're hitting your approach shots from good spots in the fairway. And if you can give me that at $7,200, let's go. Yeah, he, he's definitely been consistent. And, and to piggyback on Nap, I mean – it, it's not just the the approach game. He he's actually over the last twenty four rounds second in sand saves, thirteenth in scrambling. So you gotta like that at, at this course, you yes. know. And, and and I I agree with you. A, elite on approach. I mean that that Saturday round was he was just throwing darts. Darts, dude. Now the the only concern is you know if we see kind of what he did early on Sunday where he's snapping the driver. There's a little bit of trouble here, but. At his price, you you don't need him to win. So I I I'm fine going to it at seventy one hundred. Yeah, and that's only when he's in the lead. So if yeah. that starts happening, he's going to finish thirtieth. You know, like, yeah. and if it doesn't, he starts thirtieth on Sunday and finishes tenth. You know, like, because he's very good when he's not under pressure. So I also like Nick Taylor sixty nine hundred. I just guy that's been playing good golf lately and and sub seven k. Sign yep. me up. Good on approach, 12th over the last 24 rounds. Top 20 in sand saves, which we got tons of bunkers around here. So Doug Gim is, is going to be an issue here because I want to play him, but I could just see the ownership getting out of control. I do have a top 40 on him at, at plus 150. So as of right now, I'm leaning towards playing him, but really got to see what that ownership comes in at because I mean, I, right now it's showing somewhere around 15%, but honestly, just at this price and, and with how well he's been playing, I, I, I could see it being closer to 20. Yeah. I, I see it too. I have a top 20 at on him for at plus triple three, you know, three, three, three there. I will give you this about Doug Gim. So the reason I went for the top 20, because he does that a third of the time. In about nine of his starts, he's finishing inside the top 20 in the last 27. He has not finished inside the top five once in those 26 starts, and he's finished inside the top 10 once. Like, you know, it's it's going to be, if you, it's it's inevitably not going to be a top 10. You know, like if it happens, yeah. it'll have been a miracle because he's he just doesn't do it. He always looks like he's going to and then doesn't. But I think he sees like a massive jump in 
in top 20 rates, you know. So that's the way to go with him. He's also making top 40s at, at 54% clip. So that's the way to bet him is like those safe passive bets. The upside is not there. Bet Mathieu Pavon. Put, just switch to Mathieu Pavon. I don't know. He's probably going to be pretty owned too. But in my opinion, he's a much better golfer. He's got way more upside. He's he's won a tournament recently. He was third at the, the Pebble situation there. So there's just so much more to to like about him. And I think he's he's a better golfer and he's cheaper. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, we talked about it before. Just he had a bad week at the Arnold Palmer, which doesn't play yeah. to his skill set. And yeah. just because of one bad week, all of a sudden he's 6,700. It, yeah. it makes no sense. Yeah, I, I definitely I like him. He he's probably and right now he's actually showing about eight percent. So yeah. if if he's coming in there, that's that's a steal. Yeah, and I'll put him in a third of my lineups. Easy. I I'm so high on this guy. It's it. There's no reason to not be at this price. He's no. He's like in the Nick Taylor realm there with with like upside, you know. So give it to me all. I'll mention Billy Horschel in this range too. I think, you know, after the ninth at the Cognizant, not necessarily the greatest track record at the players. I think you got to go back to like 2017 or 19 to get like a top 10 or top 20 there. But I bet him at 200 to 1 to win the tournament, you know, after that little Cognizant surge. Why the hell not? He's been playing better golf, and I think he's going to be in my player pool for sure. Brendan Todd kind of fits the mold as well. He's been playing solid lately. And Lucas Glover will be a nice little pivot for me off of Andrew Novak, who I think is going to be quite popular, rightfully so. I just don't see all of those performances Novak's put out there have been in a little bit weaker fields. You know, the best finish was at the Waste Management. They weren't, you know, Victor and, and Xander both withdrew from there, so they weren't really, like, the biggest names at that tournament. He's now in a big boy field, the players. You know, I, I don't know if we're going to see that kind of top 10 rate from him, but... I think I can see Glover, who has played well at Sedgefield and TPC Southwind, both two courses he's won at. And, you know, I think those are two kind of comp courses that I've used this week. So those are those are some names in the sixes there that I'm I'm in the mood to put in my player pool. Absolutely. I, I love the Glover call. I mean, you know, he's he's not gonna <laughs> win at a clip that we saw towards the end of last year, but he doesn't have to at this price. He's been playing very well. I mean, obviously a long career, so he's played the players many, many times. And with how volatile it is, I mean, obviously you're you're going to see a wide range of finishes here. But, yeah, I mean, he had a sixth place back in 2017, finished third here all the way back in 2010. Now, granted, that, that was a while ago, but he's, he's playing good golf. I don't see why he couldn't do well here this week at, at only 6,300. Yeah, that that's a great price for a golfer uh, of his skill set. Yeah, and he's coming back with the broomstick again. Another broomstick guy. You know, we yep. got. I don't think he's going to lose as much strokes putting here that he has in the past. And I, I'm willing to go to Webb Simpson here. I just I I think that the injuries are behind him. He's been playing better so far this year. So. I don't think that he's vintage web when, when he won the players, but I mean, he's, he's gaining strokes off the tee at a, at a pretty good clip here recently, 39th at Pebble beach, 30th at Arnold Palmer. So I, I'm fine going there at only 5,900. It, it's, it's worth a stab or two. Yeah. I've been off him until I spoke to you. So I think I'm going to join you there. It makes a ton of sense. And it's all been, Mostly ball striking, you know, like if he can figure out the short game, we, we're in that upside is going to come through quite quickly. Absolutely. What else are you liking down down in the, the 5K range? I mean, dumpster diving here. Sure. I'll rattle off a bit of names like Mark Hubbard. You know, I think if he shows up again at some point, the, the long term ball striking numbers are, are too good for a $5,800 golfer. Um. Another name or two, CT Pan. I pulled out a sledgehammer on a previous podcast about CT Pan. I think, you know, that was a, a show we actually hammer, like they have a hammer on there. I pulled out the sledgehammer for him. I think this course suits him so well. 
I'm going to be playing quite a lot of CT Pan. Uh, the the short game's been good, but the the long, you know, the ball striking, whatever. Charlie Hoffman is someone that we haven't really seen too much of, and I think if you take a look at what he got up to at the waste management, things are looking good. You know, he had a 17th year in 2021, missed the cut in Mexico, blah blah blah. But at a course like this, where he doesn't have to hit it a million miles, I think it can probably fit his game a bit better. Ben Silverman is another name at 5,500. He's been he's been playing some solid golf as a corn ferry tour grad. I think we take a peek here. We've got a 16th at the Cog, 13th at Mexico, 18th at the Sony. Those are you know two courses at least that are very similar in nature with the Sony and the Cog there. And then Carson Young is going to be quite popular, I think, at $5,500. And Martin Laird. I've got a few 50. Can you tell I'm playing 150 lineups this week? <laughs> so Martin Laird is going to be $5,400 for me. Just flash in the pan at the Cognizant. And I think he did quite nicely, I think, over at the alternate event, which might not even show up in a lot of people's research. And then Chad Ramey. I think there's 170 to 1 out there for a first-round leader for Chad Ramey. If he can just have that first-round situation like he had at the players last year and just showed us at the Cognizant last start basically we are in business at 170 to one yeah i'm, I'm definitely going to tell you on that i i forgot all about the first round <laughs> last year and I'm, I'm definitely there on yeah. on that one yeah it's the putting you can just go nuts yeah I, I like carson young down this far you know you got to be even more skeptical if if a guy's getting ownership so Definitely got to see what he comes in at, but I, I do think that his game could fit here. I also like Sam Ryder a, a bit. Mm -hmm. Really, that, that's other than the guys that you name. Maybe Chan Kim. He's been playing okay golf recently. I, Steve Stricker. Not crazy about it. Yeah, yeah. Stricker is is definitely in play. As I said before, you know, stuck out statistically, but. Obviously, I, I didn't know when those stats were coming from. They were from quite some time ago because he's not currently playing very much golf no. on the PGA Tour. Okay, here's another name for you. 35th, 20th, and 30th in his last three players, which were 2021, 2020, and 2019. $5,000 flat, Ryan Moore. I love it. I I, I actually... Ryan Moore is one of the scrubs that I continually go to. So yeah. I honestly completely overlooked him. Basically didn't even go down to this 5K range. So I I am absolutely playing Ryan Moore. Yeah. We never even mentioned him on our first show. So thank God we're doing yeah. this because if he comes through for us now, there we are going to record every show a second time to make sure we go through everybody yep. that we need and find the likes of Ryan Moore. So there's a lot of yeah. pressure on him to excel this week. Let's have a week, Ryan. I'm sure he's listening. We'll send it directly to him. Yeah. Yep. No, he's he's definitely listening. We don't even yeah. have to send it to him. <laughs> All right. We have absolutely exhausted the field here. And I'm sure at this point, you've got to be pretty exhausted yourself. But to recap the betting card real quick, outrights, I have Justin Thomas, 25 to 1. Max Homa, 25 to 1. Will Zalatoris, 30 to 1. Hideki Matsuyama. 41 to one with seven places. Jason Day, 50 to one with seven places. Top 20s, I have Thomas plus 123. Clark plus 200. Hoagie plus 275. Top 30s, on at plus 150. Cole plus 200. And then have the Doug Gim top 40 at plus 150. I love that betting card, man. I love that betting card. So thank you. The placements, they, they make me happy. And I love how you've staggered them. You know, you haven't just loaded up a single range. You've got all the way through there, my kind of stuff. I'll rattle off my 10 dudes once more here. Max Homer, Wyndham Clark, Sahith Thagala, Min Woo Lee, Brian Harmon, Benny Ahn, Tom Hoagie, Mathieu Pavon, Billy Horschel, and Nick Taylor. Most of those numbers have kind of shifted a bit, but... They are my 10 guys. I'm going to start typing up my article now, and I do not look forward to typing up 10 different people. The next week, I'm going to be betting just a single bullet so I can type two paragraphs and call it a day. But 
such is life. Hopefully one of them can win. So it's all worth it. Well, there's a reason you're fantasy golf writer of the year. So <sighs> it's these fingers of mine are about to fall off, buddy. So, um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate you joining it's it's going to be a fun week you know it's always a good tournament and and the fact that we actually get coverage of, of these golfers and get to watch them shoot mm -hmm. shots is always a plus as well so definitely looking forward to it yeah i'm i'm so thrilled dude but thank you again for joining me for the second time greatly appreciated let everybody know where to find you Yep, rotaballer.com. That's where all those articles are going to come out at. Um, Code Maniac gets you behind the scenes for premium stuff, 10% off. Um, Back Nine Bets is my YouTube show that's on iTunes and Spotify as well. That just got done earlier today. And I also am on Twitter, AKX, at The Model Maniac. Awesome. Thanks, Byron. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Derek. And good luck at the players. Yes, man. Let's have a week. That's going to do it for this week. As always, check out thehelmsports.com. Have the hardcore parkour up there. That's my core forward. DraftKings ownership, fades, pivots, all that good stuff. Have the course preview up over there. Did a quick little breakdown of the history of all the golfers 50 to 1 and lower in the field. So check that out. But that's going to do it for this week. As always, thank you for listening. I am your host, Derek Helm. And remember... Stefan out there.